Welcome to Electron Online. Our next problem from the JEE main physics test deals with the escape velocity. So let's read the problem. It says that the initial velocity V1 required to project the body vertically upward from the surface of the Earth to just reach a height of 10R, where R is the radius of the Earth, may be described in terms of the escape velocity V sub E, such that the initial velocity v1 is equal to the square root of x over y times v sub e. The value of x will be, and so we're looking for this value here. The problem of course is that we have x over y and they don't tell us what the y value is so you could have a different ratio still be correct and yet you'll get the wrong answer. So it's, it's kind of strange that they're asking for x not x over y. Oh well, that's the way it is, so let's see what we can do with it. Well, first of all, in order to solve this problem, we need to know the equation for the escape velocity. And we should know that the equation for the orbital velocity is equal to the square root of g m over r, where m is the mass of the Earth, r is the radius of the Earth, and g is the universal uh, gravity constant. And we know that the escape velocity, at least we should know, is equal to the square root of 2 times the orbital velocity. So this is equal to the square root of 2 g m over r. So if you don't know that, of course, you'd be in a bit of trouble. All right, so soon we know that. The next thing to do is, well, what should we do to work this out? And maybe a little diagram will help us out. So let's say here's the Earth. There's the radius of the Earth, r and we are sending a rocket from the earth out to reach a height of 10r so this height here h equals 10r where the rocket will simply turn around and then fall back down because you reach the maximum height so it looks like it's a conservation of energy problem we can say that energy initial equals energy final and of course the initial energy is going to be the kinetic energy one half mv initial squared there's the v1 that's the initial velocity squared and the final energy well at that point the velocity will be zero so there's no kinetic energy there'll simply be a change in the potential energy or a gain in the potential energy so let's call it a gain or a change in the potential energy so this can be written as one half mv1 squared is equal to the final potential energy potential energy final minus potential energy initial and so that can be written as one half mv1 squared is equal to the final potential energy that's when it reaches its maximum height so it would be equal to minus g m lil m divided by r now the radius will be from the center of the earth to its location that would be 10r plus r or 11r and then we subtract from that the initial potential energy at the surface of the earth which is going to be minus g m m divided by a single r like this right away notice we can get rid of the mass of the rocket and then we can factor out a negative gm or simply a gm over r so we have one half v1 squared is equal to a gm over r and what we have left here is a minus 1 over 11 r and a minus times a minus which is a plus uh, let's see here that would be 1 over r okay now we need to put that over common denominator of 11 r so I need an 11 let me go ahead and put the parentheses out just a little bit like this so multiply this by 11 so times 11 over 11 so now we have a common denominator oh wait a minute I factored an r didn't I I need I don't need an r it'll be 1 over 1 there we go makes it a little bit easier and that means that we have 1 half v1 squared is equal to g m over r and then here we have uh, 11 minus 1 which is 10 over the common denominator of 11 there we go and then I can bring the 2 over here so I can say that v1 I'm going to take the square root is equal to the square root of 2 g 
m over r times, and here we get 10 over 11. Now notice that this quantity right here, that's exactly what I had for the escape velocity. And so this can then be written as the escape velocity times 10 over 11, or 10 over 11 times this, oh, is that, of course the square root goes all the way across here. The square root goes all the way across, all the way across, like this. Uh, square root. It's 10. Okay, so let me make sure this is so. I skipped a step, and that obviously makes it a little bit of a difference. So I put the 2 over there. Then I take the square root of both sides, so the square root of this times the square root of that, but the square root of this is escape velocity, and I still have the square root of 10 over 11, which is equal to the square root of 10 over 11 times the escape velocity. Now, notice I have the square root of x over y. If we assume y to be 11, then, of course, x equals 10. So from therefore, we could say that x equals 10, and that must therefore be the solution they're looking for. So the thing that bothers me is that what if I had 22 in the denominator, then I would have a 20 in the numerator, and then I would have 20 over 22, and then my answer would be 20, and it would still be correct. So I don't like the idea that they're just looking for x, they should really be looking for x over y, so the answer would be 10 over 11, or 20 over 22, whatever it is. But there's the answer. That's the answer if the denominator is what they're expecting there. And that is how it's done. They assume that you can find the lowest value. Right, but again, I don't like the idea that they just say x, right? Because we should have a common denominator. But yeah, that's how we do it.